Hey everyone, today we're going to give you a preview of Cyber Pet Quest, a new game coming soon from Dead Alive Games. In Cyber Pet Quest, you'll be helping Jane, a fully bionic cat, find her owner Howard. But you won't be alone on this adventure. Jane's cybernetically enhanced friends will also be there to help. This co-op takes you through different locations while trying to outsmart your enemies so you can find Howard. You also control the difficulty level, which makes this a great game for families. You can decide to increase the difficulty level for a more challenging game experience. This game is for one to four players and no matter the player count, all four characters will be used in every game. So let me introduce Jane and her friends Clay, Freya, and Roman. Each of these characters bring different strengths and abilities to the game that we'll show you a little later. For this preview though, we're only going to be showing content from the tutorial and first chapter so we don't spoil any of the story for you. Turn order is determined by the pet initiative deck. It's shuffled at the end of each round and determines the turn order for each pet. On each pet's turn, you will generate energy, choose actions, convert energy to luck, and use any items or charms. First, we generate energy. To do this, the pet will automatically gain their base energy on their pet board. Then, they roll the energy dice. For each lightning symbol you roll, your pet would gain an additional energy. For each full luck symbol you roll, your pet would gain a luck. If you roll two half symbols, your pet would gain an additional luck. But if you only roll one half symbol, you wouldn't get any additional luck this round. Next, you choose your actions. The exploration actions on the left side of your pet card can be done multiple times as long as you have enough energy to pay for the action. These actions are move, inspect, interact, and heal. Each pet may have different energy costs for these actions. For instance, Jane can spend one energy and move one space. Clay and Freya, however, both need to spend two energy to move one space, and Roman spends three energy to move three spaces. The key thing to remember is to work together with your fellow pets to maximize your pet's abilities. Each pet will also have a special ability or traits that you can use once per round. Once you've completed all of the actions you can on your turn, you convert the remaining energy to luck. In this case, Clay has one energy left that wasn't spent during the turn. This will convert to one luck. Outside of the tutorial chapter, luck can be used to do things like gain energy or dodge an attack or even more. Last on your turn, you can choose to use an item that you found or a charm. Each pet can have up to three items and three charms at any given time. Items can be used to prevent damage, to help pets investigate or interact with an object, add movement to a pet's action or more. The first charms you'll encounter are your pet's collars, and you'll find more charms you can collect during the game. Once per turn, a pet can also choose an impact action. Now these may be used to interact with an object or face off with a sim. In the first chapter, you'll have your first interaction with the sims. Each of the sims are unique and have a special ability representing their personality. The sims will have one of three ability types, target, attack and move, or passive. Both target and attack and move abilities trigger when the sims take that type of action. The passive abilities are their traits and are often reactions from the sims. There's specific text on each card to help explain the timing of each of these. Just like the pets, the sims have an initiative deck that will determine their turn order. Turns will alternate between pets and sims for each round. You can also choose the sim's difficulty level between easy, medium, hard, or nightmare at the start of each chapter. This will determine the movement the sims get, the amount of damage they can deal, and how much impact it takes to stun them. Each chapter will have a specific location set up and success and failure criteria. Once you start chapter one, the pets will also need to decide if they will be sneaking or going aggro at the start of their turn. Sneaking will cost one extra energy for each action you take, but it may prevent the Sims from targeting you directly on their turn. It does mean you can't take any type of impact actions on your turn. You'd have to go aggro for that. 
You'll take the aggro token and place it in front of you, and this will likely direct us any sim movement or aggressive acts towards you. Now pets do have a limited amount of health, so make sure you're keeping an eye on your track. You can spend energy to heal yourself or another pet within the same space as you. If a pet loses all of their health, they are KO'd. And if they're not healed by a friend by the end of the round, then the entire group loses that chapter. This is why it's so important to work together. You can play each chapter on its own or play through a whole campaign. You can also change the difficulty level at the chapter level, so mix it up. Try out different scenarios and try playing as different characters to make the most of your experience. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is that your character will actually level up as you play. This is a really fun addition to the game as you can get stronger as the threat of the Sims increases. Your charms also have levels as well, so there's a lot of game to explore. And I don't want to spoil anything from the story, so we're not going to show too much of the later chapters in this preview, but just know that is something you'll get to explore. You'll have more of the game's story to read as part of the setup for each chapter. It'll give you an idea of what's going on or give you some clues on things you should be looking out for, so be sure to listen closely. That's pretty much all you need to get started. Now let's talk a bit about what we thought of this one. I'll be honest, I don't gravitate towards co-op games, but this one did a nice job of mixing things up and making me feel like my contributions were important for success. So I work with the other players to help decide our play in each chapter, but I didn't get the feel that other players were playing the game for me like I have in other co-ops. Now I'm glad that all of the characters are used no matter the number of players. We played this mostly at two and thought it was pretty easy to manage. The initiative deck helps a lot with that and it can actually have an impact on your turn. See, you may have the perfect plan, but if you're last in the turn order, then you may have to make a new plan. And it really kind of reminded me of the times that I roll low initiative in D&D. The fact that my character gets stronger as the game progresses was also something that I think added a nice touch. You learn from the experiences in other chapters, which is very, very thematic. I really like how you can vary the difficulty level in this as well. That makes it a lot more approachable for families and even those looking for maybe a less intense co-op experience. But if you're someone who really likes a tough co-op game, then there is definitely something here for you too. There is a lot of game in this tiny box and several chapters with a great story to keep you engaged in what's happening. So I think it also keeps the door pretty open for other adventures if Dead Alive decides to do something like that later on. Now, everything you saw today is from a prototype version of the game and the rules. So everything is subject to change in the final product. But to be honest, I feel like the overall mechanics and gameplay have been tested really well and are in a good place. So I don't think you're going to see a ton of changes there. I know this is something that Dead Alive takes very seriously with their game. So I'm confident that you're going to receive a very solid game. And the big question you probably have is, do we recommend it? And the answer is yes, we absolutely do. Especially if you like thematic story driven games, there are a lot of subtle touches in here with items and charms that are very thematic and really help drive that narrative in the story. And if you like a game that you can change the difficulty of and play with a lot of different people, then I think that you would like this one as well. Now it is true that once you play through a chapter, you do lose a little bit of the surprise but you can still try it on a harder level. You can see if you can beat it faster. You still have options. The initiative deck and various item cards means you're still not going to have the exact same experience twice. So be sure to follow this one. We will drop a link in the description and consider giving them your support. We are very big fans of Dead Alive Games. They have delivered some really stellar products in the past, and I feel very confident that they're going to do that again now. That does it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, consider giving us a thumbs up or even subscribing to the channel. Your support really means a lot to us. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok if you enjoy any of those apps. Until next time.